here at the New York State Fairgrounds. Tim Fuller in that 19 car, the JNL Motorsports entry. He's been on top all the way. Jimmy Phelps, though, putting heat on him in the 98 car. Phelps has been impressive with the H and H machine, staying right there. A good way to learn some experience around this mile is follow a guy who's raced here before and has won here before. That Ward is third in the red 42, the Gypsum Express entry. He's Decker's teammate. What belongs to Richie Tobias in that USA one, and then a pack of cars putting pressure on Tobias, and one car in some trouble. Is that Ronnie Johnson? Yes, it is. That is RJ pulling off the back stretch. A tough break. He started in the top six. His race is over. Ronnie Johnson, his dad Jack, who's been running this race almost since the start, in the 12 car, still in competition here this afternoon. Top three unchanged as they race through turn number two, 36 laps up on the board, and Ward in the top three. There's Tobias and the Johnsons. Jack is fifth, and Allen back there in sixth. Jeff Trombley quietly working back there in seventh. Billy Decker is eighth. Chad Brockman, a very good one, back in position number nine. Watching the 42P of Pat Ward. He's never won this race. He's been close a couple of times. Best finish was a third place run. He's actually won here on the mile back when we used to race on Labor Day. But now this is the only time that these drivers come to the mile and he's looking to get that big payoff. Back on board with Tim Fuller starting from the pole. He's led all the way thus far. Looking back at the second place machine of Jimmy Phelps. Phelps I think has decided hey I'll run second for a while. I'll settle down take care of the car. Good strategy, I think, at this time of the race. Let's go back a little further in the field. Donnie Corrales, Vinny Vitale in the 56 car, and Danny Johnson, 24th, 5th, and 6th right now. Danny took a look to the top side. We saw him do that in the 358 race. He's going to have to do that to get by the cars in front of him now as he is mired in the back of the pack. Well, Danny Johnson's gained four spots since the previous restart. As he works his way down the front straightaway, tucked in behind Vitale there in that red and yellow 56 car. Matt Shepard just made a nice move on the top side to get around Gary Tompkins. Now Shepard closing right in on the back deck leg of the doctor. Any door that the doctor opens, you know Matt Shepard's going to try and follow him through. And Danny Johnson on the outside down the back stretch will whistle by by Tally and pick up another position. Boy, that's a tough place to pass. Oh, trouble. Car in trouble. Third caution of the day here on lap 43. It's the 90 car. Martin Roy, another Martin Roy in trouble. And we are under caution again at the Moody Mile. Pit crews at the ready. We could see some pit stops up coming here. I think a lot of drivers are going to hit pit lane. This is their opportunity for the first time to make a tire change. Well, we'll see if the race leader, Tim Fuller, decides to make his first stop of the day. Jack Johnson's crew ready with tires. We'll be back. Welcome back to Syracuse, the New York State Fairgrounds. Under caution, race leader Tim Fuller has dropped to the inside. Shane, I think he's going to come to pit road for his first stop of the day. Looks like Jimmy Phelps will stay out there, though. Interesting strategy by Phelps to stay out on the racetrack, looking to get a little bonus money, maybe. Matt Ward is also in on pit road. Several other drivers deciding to stop. DeMarc Kenyon. Pat Ward down through the pits and hot to the attention of his crew. Jack Johnson, the 62-year-old, puts it in the pits, and right behind him, Alan Johnson. Now the pits are crowded. Trombley, Decker, Farron, everybody in here. All the crews up, lug nuts flying. Decker's crew having a little trouble with the right rear. Jack's crew having trouble with the gas can. These stops are not precise, but I'll tell you what, it's going to be exciting. Hearn, last one to pull in. Hearn, the last one off the track. He had trouble stopping the car. Jeff Trombley beats everybody out of pit road as Tim Fuller was the first one in in the fourth car out. Alan Johnson there in car number 14, a guy who certainly knows how to get the job done here. He is down and away. Not even a pit road speed limit here at Syracuse. And here comes Decker, that Gypsum Wholesalers 91, four-time winner, and the Fuller team high-fiving each other. Burned down and away and went with construction car. Wayne Jelly almost clipped him with yeah. number 45. No pit road speed. You get in and get out as quick as you can. We've called this rush hour on dirt for a long time, and it's nowhere more rushed than right here at Syracuse on pit road. What about Bobby Varon's team? They've got trouble with the left rear tire. Bobby Varon coming into town this weekend with the Gable Motorsports team. This is the team that Brett Hearn drove for last year. A very potent ride. He had high expectations coming into this event. But it looks as though Varon's chances for winning may go away here because he may get caught on pit road. Now they're going to keep the caution out. It'll be another lap before green, but it looks like he will go a lap down on pit road. Let's have a look at what the restart order looks like. Jimmy Phelps will lead him back to green next time by. And trouble for the Stafford team. 
Kenny Stafford's car's on fire on pit road. Looks like the overflow for the gas for the Sonoma race fuels. They're wasting no time getting the kid out of his car. Remember, he won the sportsman race last year here at the mile. Just 18 years of age. The dirt safety crew here at the fairgrounds quickly on the scene with fire bottles, but that will likely end his day as well. 26th on the board when he brought that 60 car to pit road for its pit stop first pit stop of the day Kenny Stafford out has the helmet off looks like he's OK safety car back in Jimmy Phelps will lead them to green for the restart here as they work their way into turn number three Richie Tobias stayed out in the USA one I mentioned some bonus money there's lap money that is paid for every lap that you lead but this is a pretty good strategy by that H and H Motorsports team stay out there a little longer hope for a later caution and maybe try and make it the rest of the distance he is going to have to pit but Whoa. Randy Kiyosaki whoa somebody losing their tear offs <laughs> Looked like Richie Tobias might have had a box of tear offs just come unhinged in there and go flying out the window of the USA one. That could be a huge problem for him later on in the day. Good battle right here between Dale Plank and Steve Hulsizer. Oh contact back there. Hulsizer ran over Dale Plank. Plank slowed mysteriously. Matt Shepard has to take evasive action. So the 77 of Plank looked as though the car might have jumped out of gear. Something obviously happened to the drivetrain of that car. And Plank is way off the pace, but we will stay green here at the Booty Mile. That is the Ryan Jacobs owned number 77X, the East End Auto Parts and Construction Machine. Won a series race up at the Cornwall Motor Speedway earlier this year. So Plank heads to pit road. They call him the natural. He limps that car to pit road. Coming up on the 50 lap mark, and Jimmy Phelps out in front comfortably. In fact, he stretched the lead. He is only one of five cars that has not pitted yet, right? Well, Phelps has burned off a lot of fuel in that 98 car, so lighter tanks allowing him to stretch that lead nicely. But if the cars who pit it, how about the doctor, Danny Johnson, up to sixth now, Mark? We're down here with Mike Burke. Mike, the halfway's coming up. You guys didn't stop the last time and you trying to shoot for the halfway money? Not really so much concerned with the halfway money. We're just trying to, uh, well, trying to get a little advantage a bit early. And uh, hopefully, the, the, you know, the cautions kind of fall our way. Be around lap 130, 140. You know, we can we can pit. Just kind of, you know, the whole short pit deal. That was what we we're thinking. So, uh, you know, just kind of wait and see how it goes. Guys are saying that their tires are blistering. Your tire looked pretty good when it came off. Does Danny say anything on the radio about the feel of the car? Uh, the car is still tight. Uh, we changed the right rear there in our last pit stop around uh, lap 30. Put a right rear on, try to free the car up a little bit, but uh, didn't seem to help. So, just going to hold on, ride around to the next caution there. That's around lap 120, 130. The word down here in the in the uh, Danny Johnson kit. Steve Holsizer in that 88 having a sensational run. He's one of the cars that have not pitted yet. He's back there in position number five. Had that contact with Dale Plank a few moments ago. Let's get on board with Tim Fuller, 18th for the pole sitter, who led the first 40 plus laps before making his first stop of the day. And that view over the rear deck lid is the one that Fuller wants everyone else to have at the end of 200 laps. Behind Fuller, the Hurricane, Steve Payne in car number seven as he works his way out of turn two. Fuller certainly can afford to be patient, but you've got to be mindful of track position here, and you certainly don't want to get caught out. There's Jack Johnson, 62 years young in that 12. They told me last year, this is the last time I'll be here for the Ecker 200. Guess what? He rolled in here earlier in the week, qualified terrifically fast. Two-time winner here of the Ecker 200, the first New York State-born driver to win in 1979, and then he did it again in 1984. I was going to say, he's been coming here just about since we started running this race 34 seasons ago. He's only missed one Eckerd 200. Other than that, his record here has been spotless. On board with Billy Decker, the Gypsum Express, the 91 car, the four-time winner. And when it comes down to fuel mileage, my money's going to be on Decker. I have seen them steal this race a couple of times. All trouble, Halsizer, way up out of the groove in the 88 car and off the gas. That'll bring out our fourth caution of the day with 62 laps on the board. Steve Holsizer and the Bob Snyder owned Thompson Road Tavern number 88. A sensational run going here today. Put this car together specifically for Syracuse. He was running fifth at the time that the car broke. That'll bring out the yellow and the field will be brought under caution. All right, the New York State Fairgrounds getting set for a big dose of traffic on the pit road. The Ecker 200 will be back in a moment.
Welcome back to the New York State Fairgrounds. Preparing for a restart. Danny Johnson takes the lead after a round of pit stop. Let's recap a little of what happened. Jimmy Phelps gave up the lead. He came to pit road in the 98. There's Tobias in the USA 1. Everybody scrambling to get new tires, new right rear. The 98 team wearing helmets on pit road. Not a bad idea. A nice precautionary safety move by the H&H &H Motorsports team to protect their crews. Phelps a good stop. Chad Brockman beats him out with Andy Bacchetti right there in the third spot. Now the 98 team high-fiving on pit road. There's Brackman in the pizza logs entry. Almost won the small block 150 mile to here earlier in Super Dirt Week. Danny Johnson will lead him to green and Superman Shepard on his tail. Back to racing at Syracuse. Danny Johnson has won this race and that was back in 1997. While the 44 of Matt Shepard came oh so close a couple years ago to winning his first Ecker 200, only to have a tire go flat two laps from the end. Now this 98 running third is the veteran Eddie Marshall out of Richfield, Connecticut. The Marshall Oil entry. He's a Lebanon Valley star. And a lot of action on the backstretch down into turn three. A lot of drivers trying to pick up some positions here off that restart. Ryan go down in that number 26 out of Ringo's, New Jersey. Right there behind him is that number 21 J of Jeff Trombley. Go down, won a sportsman race here on the mile a couple of super group weeks ago. Rick Laubach in the five car. He was also a contender in the 358 race. Oh, what's the problem? Brent Hearn. Guys, we're getting some white smoke out the back of the car. That four man smoke. Smoke with the Hearn, who's won this thing five times, he's had no luck at all since those five victories. He won this race five times in 11 years and has not won since 1995. Hearn trying to keep the 20 car out there, but he is off the pace. You can tell that is a lot of smoke. Smoking pretty good. Smoking pretty bad. Shut her down, buddy. Shut her down. That's the call from Pitt Road to the great veteran Brett Hearn. Go ahead and shut her down. His day is done, and we're not even to halfway. It looked like he was laying some fluid down on the inside yeah. of the speedway, and it looks like he'll be able to get off on the back stretch. Yeah, you can see some oil starting to show up on the body panels on the back end of the Wentworth Construction 20 car. So Brett Hearn from New Jersey will take that car to Pitt Road. He'll use the back entrance here at the Moody Mile. Hearn's day over prematurely one more time. Danny Johnson, though, has set sail. 71 laps on the board, opening up the lead over Matt Shepard. The doctor was part of those first groups of cars to come down pit road on lap 28. Also in that group, Rick, second place car, Matt Shepard. Shepard in the 44. They call him Super Matt. Let's take a ride with Danny Johnson. Now, under ideal conditions, how many laps can you go before you need to stop here? Anywhere's between 113 and 117 laps. We've seen Billy Decker stretch at 117 laps. So these guys are looking at that, using that as the basis for their pit stops. So if you're Danny Johnson, you're probably thinking, hey, if I can get the lap 85 and catch a yellow, I'm going to come to pit road and make my final stop of the day. Anywhere's from lap 85 on, you're going to see a lot of cars dive down pit road and try and make it to the end. Super Mad Shepard there in the 44 car has cycled to second spot. Track position when you decide to pit at Syracuse ever so important as we start to work toward halfway here this afternoon in the Eckerd 200. Now we've got some great battles all around the racetrack. There's the car of Eddie Marshall. Now this battle a little further back here. This is for fourth and fifth. Ryan go down and Jeff Trombley. Trombley having a fine run back there as the 21J out of Altamont, New York, making his first appearance in a bunch of years here on the mile. To turn three, everybody keeping those cars as straight as possible. I'm starting to think about tires and fuel and when they'll try to make their last stop and go all the way. Danny Johnson, though, he's really in the catbird seat now as he stretches that lead and gets close to the opportunity to make his stop. You know, he's been talking with his crew chief, Mike Burdick, over the one way radio, wanting to feel the car out. And the car's handling very well. Look at the lead he's already established over Matt Shepard. Further back, Pat Ward, Jack Johnson doing battle. This is for seventh and eighth right now. Ward was a part of those cars that stopped back on lap number 46, so Ward setting himself up for a late race pit stop as well. Jack Johnson in that 12A, one of the great number and driver combinations for almost 40 years here in New York State and all across the Northeast in dirt modified racing. And Pat Ward's been at it a long time too. What'd you tell me, 30 years Pat Ward's been racing? 35 years he's been racing in Central New York, not only in the big block modifieds, but also in the late models. Every time I see Jack Johnson, I say, you know, you were running when I was a kid. He <laughs> says, don't tell me that. 62, he feels 32. That's a great thing. Further back now, 
Jimmy Horton in that white 42 card. Kenny Trevon in the 115. They're chasing Allen Johnson back around 12th and 13th. 